See Gency back at it again. And we have a an important important conversation to have today. It is something that has been blowing up on the social media waves as it relates to Haiti. And for once, and for once, it's about something that is being built and being constructed by the joint efforts of Haitians instead of something being put down or removed. Really, truly, I'm not, I'm not being hyperbolic. This is easily the first time since I've, I personally moved back to Haiti, uh, first time really since uh, I started doing social media that I'm doing a, a story about, you know, I've done stories in the past where it's go the government, it's an individual, it's a company coming together to build, but this is really the first time we're talking about something extremely unique which is the Haitian people coming together and building in a very important infrastructure project. But if it was only as simple as that, because we have something happening with the Dominican Republic where they are re demanding that this rare unified effort be stopped. And there's a lot of pressure, a lot of conversation that's been happening. And, and in fact, you know, quite frankly, perhaps one can even argue one reason that we've seen this togetherness has because of the pressure of the Dominican Republic. The point of this episode is going to be to explore this topic of the Canal Wanamet uh, and, and, and really understand the source of this conflict between the Haiti and Dominican Republic uh, as it relates to this canal and really get at the heart of the way forward. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a really great episode. Before we go any further, let's do a quick word from our sponsor, Saint-Poussin Haitien. Saint-Poussin Haitien brand is a brand brought to you by Hyper Distribution that is taking products out of Haiti and bringing them to the world. Each product you see here from the G. Shela and its extremely rich earthy tones and flavors and nutrition to our Jonjo, 100% grown in Haiti to our boule de chocolat, also perfect for the upcoming fall and winter evenings, and our hot chocolate, Haitian hot chocolate, to, oh, the exceptionally well-known cassava from the northern part of Haiti, cassava au cap. Each one of these products can be found on Amazon, one click away and at your doorstep within 24 hours. Link is below, give us support, because each purchase goes to reinforce the economy of Haiti. Thank you. Let's understand where exactly this conflict is happening. And it's happening in the city, Haitian city of Wanamet, right along the border of the, of the Dominican Republic, uh, adjacent to the city of Jabon. Uh, the river, Jabon River, which becomes Massacre River, uh, once it crosses on the on, on Haitian side, or how Haitians recognize it, is at the center of the conflict. So it's important to understand where this conflict resides, and it's right on the border between Wanamet, Haiti, and Jabon, Dominican Republic. Uh, there is the Jabon River, which Haitians recognize as the Massacre River. The history of that river goes way back. Since 1728, when the Spanish massacred a group of French uh, along the river, and since then, it's, has, it's been known as Massacre River. It also has gotten that name through a much more recent massacre that occurred. And this occurred in 1937 by dictator Rafael Trujillo during a purge of Haitians out of Dominican Republic, killed upwards, this is estimates, of 20,000 Haitians. So for those two reasons, the French slash Haitian side has had a, let's say, negative connotation for the river uh, and in the name Masque River has stuck right now the river itself uh, actually starts on the Haitian side uh, and is joined by several tributaries and combining to uh, provide a, a, a big chunk of the river's current flow in August 2018 Haiti started the construction of this canal the Cuban company Dinva won that contract and started to work on this canal with a flow irrigation of 150 meters squared with a valve of roughly 150 meters wide. 
the first serious conflict actually occurred right away from the beginning of that work in 2018, when Dominicans became genuinely aware of that of of that project. The anti-Haitian far right immediately jumped on this with reservations. The argument being that this work could reduce the flow of the river. Not to mention using arguments concerning the environment and ecosystem. The first serious threat occurred in 2021, April 26, 2021, where Dominican soldiers actually crossed over from the Dominican side and entered Haitian soil to quote unquote understand the situation, but really it was understood even then to be a tactic to pressure and cause the work to stop. The governor of Jabon and the ambassador of Haiti along with technical reps and civic organizers coming together uh, and, and working out this, this specification. And, and it was understood in, in a joint release, press release, that the, this work was not going to, quote unquote, divert the river. And the work continued. This is, again, in April 27th. The work would continue. That is where things had concluded. Unfortunately, Jovenel Moise, who at the time uh, was the one to uh, engage that project, would die, be assassinated, in early July. And at which point the project came to an abrupt stop. And that's where the project sat for over two years. In August of 2023, specifically August 30th, a group of farmers association and associations from the Wanaman area and, and commune came together with funds raised amongst themselves to continue the project that would continue to sit languishing if there was not a direct intervention from them, which they felt was necessary. And that plan, to be clear, would follow the specifications of what was agreed upon from the very beginning. To understand the legal principles behind this, it's important to understand ultimately the rules, laws of which really both Haiti and the Dominican Republic are party of. And that's the 1997 United Nations Convention concerning transboundary watercourses. The first being by Article 5, which guarantees that such watercourses can be used and will have the right to be used by both parties, by both states, freely, without the other infringing on that right. The next article has to do with Article 7, which requires that neither state's intervention on those waterways damages that waterway and prevents the other from being able to use it. And the third article, which is Article 8, says that both states must cooperate in a rational, good faith manner to work together, ensure neither right, neither's rights are infringed. Furthermore, there was a bilateral agreement in place between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. In January 21, 1929, there was a treaty signed. The Treaty of Peace, Friendship, and Arbitration was signed specifically to fortify the, at the time, rather open issue of the border between Haiti and the Dominican Republic. At the time, President, Haitian President Stano Vincent and uh, Dominican President Rafael Trujillo, in addition to that 1929 agreement, there would be subsequent ones, one in 1933, the other in 1935, that would fortify the relationship, specifically as it related to Wanamet and Jabon. The presidents at the time were President Steno Vincent and President Trujillo, Rafael Trujillo. While all these agreements were about delineating the border and uh, delineating which, river, which part of the river was what, Going back to 1929, particularly Article 10, 
specifically discusses the situation we're in right now. Well, which let's go ahead and read. Due to the fact that rivers and other water courses originate in the territory of one of the two states cross the territory of other or serve as their limits, the two high contracting parties undertake not to make either consent to any work likely to change the natural course of the river, of these waters, or to alter the flow of the sources. This provision cannot be interpreted to deprive either of the two states of the right and use in a just and equitable manner within the limits of their respective territories. The said rivers and other water courses for purposes of watering of land and other agricultural and industrial purposes. Right? So the language is very clear. You know, neither party, quite frankly, are able to just freely use the river as they choose. But here's the thing. Are you ready for this? The Dominican Republic has over 11 canals already on the river, canals and some dams. And despite being, one can argue, in violation of the 1929 treaty, they do expect Haiti not to have a single canal coming from that river. And most importantly, and most importantly, there is actually a study that was done by a D Dominican academic, a Dominican academic, entitled Unequal Exchanges in Binational Urban Complex of Dominican Border with, ha with Haiti, published in 2004 in, the, in, in one of DR's most uh, prestigious journals, stated that all these 11 works drastically reduced the flow of the river, especially as it relates to what would pass through the Haitian side, in blatant disregard of not only international law, but the 1929 treaty. So in short, the claims that the Dominicans are currently using right now, where they're stating this one canal is going to cause damage to the river, is extremely, extreme, at best, hypocritical. So the question becomes, what's the way forward? As of the shooting of this episode, the language and the actions of the Dominicans, led by President Abiner, has only ratcheted up with recent articles coming out stating that they're interested in building a 12th canal directly above the uh, one being built currently in Wanamet with the specific desire to drastically reduce the amount of water that is available for Anamet in even more flagrant disregard to the UN Convention and the 1929 agreement. So the way forward is by that agreement that occurred in May 27, 2021, after the ex excursion of the Dominicans onto the Haitian side, where we had political groups sit together and come into an understanding which allowed the work to continue, there isn't any reason why we cannot go back to that agreement. That framework was clear, and both sides came to an understanding that the work that was going to be done was not going to harm the flow of that river. We should go back to that agreement, so long as if the demands do want to bring their technicians to follow the work, audit the work, and ensure the work is being done According to that specification, certainly they should. Alternatively, if an arbitration is required, certainly they should. That same treaty in 1929 did talk about uh, if there was a disagreement, that the, dis the recourse should be to go to an international body uh, to speak and ultimately come to an agreement on how to move forward. To read the language of that 1929 agreement, the high contracting parties undertake to submit to arbitration all disputes of an international character which may arise between them due to the claim of a right made by one against the other by virtue of treaty or otherwise in claim which is not possible to settle through diplomatic channels, which is a legal nature because 
it can't be decided by the application of principles of law. So by that same 1929 agreement of which the Dominicans are trying to enforce, there is a very clear way to move forward and solve this dispute. Closing the border, using threats, having 10,000 military men go on the border to, to menace the Haitians on the other side are unnecessary, especially since they could go to the International Court of Justice. Could it be because they may understand they do not have a case to stand on? Possible. And finally, in, it, it behooves both parties to create an ongoing legal framework for them to work out of, which will allow either side and their concerns to be met, respected, planned for. It's really only through collaboration, as DR and AD will, our eternal neighbors, to find an equitable, just path forward. And that path forward does not mean Haiti in perpetuity never builds any canals, any works on any transboundary river while the Dominicans build endless amounts on their side. While we understand that it's the view of the river is held by a small percentage and regrettably, that percentage at the moment have the realms of the government. Uh, it's important to understand Haitians are not going to fall back. Haitians are not going to go back. This canal will be built. In trying to understand the canal being built, we had an interview with one of the leaders of the canal, Mr. Antoine Claude of FOI that was one of the initial organ organizations, there was five in total in addition to the, those farmers, that came together and st restarted the work on August 30th. For those who appreciated uh, th what's being done, appreciate and understand the importance of the work of the Massacre River, here's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to contribute. The information for Antoine Claude and Foy uh, are below. The instructions to provide is by using either rest union, uni transfer, cam transfer, and selecting the bank deposit option. And selecting the bank that is listed in the description and depositing. It will, they will directly deposit that amount into that bank account. I've already provided. A large sum, a large sum donation, to the, to the work that's being done, and I encourage you to do the same. Together, we can get this river done. Together, it must be done. In this period where there is so much negative news and negative feelings coming out of the country, it is something that we Haitians everywhere have been yearning for. And we certainly should ride that wave and ride it not just to the completion of this canal, not just to uh, having a river to irrigate land, but to go even further, to ride that wave for more projects, ride that wave for more political organization, and ride that wave until Haiti works for all Haitians. What do you think about this? What's your opinion? Do you agree? Should this canal be done? Do you agree with the Dominicans? Do you believe that there is irreversible harm that's going to happen by this canal being built? Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment below. If you like these sort of videos, do share it, right? So what we do here at CGNT, we're always providing a deeper dive perspective on what's going on in the country. If you like what we're going on here, hit that subscribe button, like it, and we'll be back at it again. We're back at it again. Peace.